Today I want to talk about something that I think is very lacking in the church, and that is thankfulness. I am not sure that we're really grateful for what God has given us, and we need to be very aware of all that God has given us, no matter what is going on in our lives. I know this year has been very crazy, and many of us didn't get what we expected or what even we wanted but were we born with something to be thankful for? That is my original question. In Psalms 106.1, it says, Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love endures forever. Wow. I am so thankful that God does not base His love on what I do or what I don't do. But He is constantly loving me giving towards me, giving to me, watching over me, protecting me. I have everything that I need in this life. Thank God that He is so good to us that we don't have to worry about Him getting up in the morning and saying, oh, I'm having a bad day. I just can't love people. I just can't bless people. God will never do that. He's always consistent regardless of what is going on in my life, regardless of what is happening in my life, God's love is always consistent. And I need to really thank God that He loves me for who I am. And He loves me, yet He's not going to allow me to stay where I am. He's going to help me get from where I am to where He wants me to be so I can be an effective person in the kingdom of God. I hear people complaining nonstop. Well, I don't have this. I don't have that. Yet, I find it really amazing. I, I grew up in, in the United States, and we have everything you could possibly think of. And they sell you things that you don't need because it's the fashion. This is what you have to have to be popular. You have to do this. You have to have this type of car. You have to have this type of house. You have to wear this type of clothes. You have to be with this type of people to be popular. I don't think that impresses God a whole lot. He gives us what we need when we need it. And He knows who is best for us to be in our lives. Sometimes those people are not the most popular. Sometimes I don't even want them in my life. But I know God has placed them there for a very specific reason. Number one, so they can show me what is going on in my life. Number two, so I can show them what is going on in their life. But the best part of it is to encourage and to challenge and to help people become all that God wants them to be, not all that I want them to be. I was in West Africa, out in the middle of nowhere. These people had absolutely nothing. They had one change of clothes, the one they wore, then they would wash, and then they would put on their second uh, change of clothes, and they were happy. They ate the same thing every day, seven days a week, 30 days a month, 356 days a year. And they danced and they celebrated because they had food. It was the same with their shacks, their mud huts, or whatever they could find to build their house with. They were happy. They were thankful people. And here I am complaining about everything that I don't have because that's what I've been told what to do. Well, you can't be happy because you don't have this or you don't have that or you don't live in this place or you don't live in this place. 
and you don't have this type of food. Oh, you can't go out to restaurants all the time. You can't be happy. You don't have this type of friends. You can't be happy. And I'm told constantly that I'm not supposed to be happy, that I'm not supposed to be thankful. But this is a lie of the enemy. God made me a thankful people. Even in Genesis, he put Adam in the garden to take care of it, to tend it. And then he gave him a family, which is a tremendous blessing. Do you thank God for your family? I thank God for everybody that God put in my life, all my friends, all of my family. What would I do if I was all by myself? It would not be good. It would not be easy. I would not be able to share with anybody else what is going on in my life. That would be an absolute tragedy. But God knew exactly what he was doing when he put Adam in the garden and he says, take care of it. Make sure you're working. Make sure you are thankful for what you get yourself. Uh, one day I went to my father and I said, Dad, I need a new car. He said, yes, you do. Go work for it. Earn the money and buy it yourself. I thought that is the meanest person I have ever met in my entire life. I could not believe he wouldn't give me the money to go buy a car. But I worked really hard. I saved the money. I bought my own car. It was amazing how well I took care of it. How thankful I was because I earned the money to buy the car myself rather than somebody just giving me something and telling me what to think and how to think and what I need to be doing. God said, if you will do it yourself, there is a pride factor there, a good pride factor. Because other people will see that you work hard, that you've got good character, and they will trust you. They will want you to work for them because they know that you have what it takes to be a success. Well, isn't this amazing? Everything going wrong, everything that we think we need is really something that we don't need. 90% of the diseases come from water. So all I have to do is go to a developing country and have, have help them drill a well, get them water. Help them be thankful that they don't have to walk two or three hours a day to get water or to, to walk two or three hours to get wood every day. The simple things in life are normally the easiest and the best things in life. What I work for, I become very proud of, but I also take very good care of them because I am really thankful that God has given me the ability to do things, to work hard, to get what it takes to be a success. And yet God constantly blesses me, gives me what I need, not necessarily what I want, but he always gives me what I need when I need it. And you are very important to me. You are part of me. You are the body of Christ. Well, I need you as much as you need me. In Genesis 1, God gave Adam the ability to work but he also gave him the responsibility to work. If I have nothing, I'm okay. If I have everything, I'm okay. Just like Paul said, I know how to abound and I know how to abase. That means if I have lots of things, I'm thankful. If I have nothing, I am thankful because I know that God is able to take care of me regardless of what is going on in my life. Therefore, I challenge all of us. Let's be thankful. Yes, God blesses us constantly 
with all good things. But let's recognize what we have, not what we don't have. Let's thank God for what we have, not what we don't have. My relationship with Christ is the most important thing in my life. I need to thank God every day because I am saved, because He watches over me, because He helps me. There are so many things that we have a tendency of forgetting, but God is a good God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every person in Asia, all over this region. <clears throat> I thank you that we will be able to be thankful for everything you have given us. God, every morning, help us when we wake up to thank you for life for another day, for impact of another day, for being able to breathe every day. God, thank you so much for all of my friends, and I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen.